Okay, so what if you start at the number 4, what number must you subtract to end up at 0? Now we started with positive 4. Um, and what number must you subtract to end up at 0? This is a simple, simple, simple lesson. I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's always going to be the number you start with. Any number minus itself is 0. So I must have subtracted 4. And the way we write that out is... 4 minus 4 equals 0. Any number minus itself gives you 0 back. Good way of thinking about this is in the real world, if you have $4, what, how much money must I take away for you to be broke? Well, I'd have to take away the same amount of money you started with. Um, let's look at another one. If I start at the number negative 5, what number must I subtract to end up at zero. Now I'll give you a hint, it's not five. If I subtract five, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to be at negative ten. I've already said that you're subtracting the same number you started with. What number did you start with? You started with negative five. So you're going to be subtracting negative five. And so uh, remember too that two negatives make a what? They make a positive. So it's the same thing as adding five and that's why we're moving to the right. So again, this lesson so simple, sometimes we overcomplicate it, but you always just subtract the number you're, you started with. In this case, you started with negative 5, so you would subtract negative 5. The way to write this out is negative 5 minus negative 5 gives you 0 back. As weird as that seem, that looks, it's actually a very simple concept. Um, again, talking about money, let's say you owed somebody $5.00 but they took that debt away from you. So they took the negative five debt away from you. In other words, they more or less gave you the five dollars that you originally borrowed. Guess what? You owe them nothing now. This is exactly why a negative minus a negative gives you a zero. And again, if it confuses you, you can go back and look at this number line example and do some more examples on your own. Because I know sometimes we look at numbers and symbols in math and we get confused. And that's okay because we're human. Okay, if I start at 6, I'll circle that again. If I start at 6, what number must I subtract? 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I move 6 to the left, that means I subtracted 6 to end up at 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. So the way to write that is if I start out with six dollars and you took six dollars away from me then I would have no money so again you're always just this number right here is the number you started with I'm going to call this lesson even though this word is a little awkward it is actually a word I looked it up subtractive inverse property just like additive inverse property this is subtractive the gist of this lesson is, if I start with a number A, what number must I subtract to end up at zero? And the answer is, you subtract the number itself. Even if it's a negative number, like we looked at here, you would subtract itself. In general, if I wanted to write this rule, it would be negative x minus negative x. It gives you zero, or negative a minus negative a, either way. Um, in fact, I'm going to write it that way. It would be negative a, any number, say negative 9, minus negative a, negative 9, for example, would give you 0, because that would be the same as negative 9 uh, plus 9. Okay. 10 minus what gives you 0 would be minus itself, right? So, therefore, 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. Okay. Negative 13 minus what gives you 0? Well, it'd have to be minus itself, right? Don't make the mistake of switching the sign. You don't subtract positive 13. You subtract itself. So you're subtracting the same thing in order to end up at 0. Just remember, any number minus itself is 0. I'm going to actually write that out. <laughs> that way it will really help you remember this. Any number minus itself equals 0. So negative 13 minus itself would be negative 13 minus 13. 
Remember, that's a rule that applies to all numbers. So we're going to see that in a few seconds. Including decimals, negative 17.2 minus itself, negative 17.2 would give you zero. Let's say you owed somebody $17.20. If they took that debt away from you, it'd be the same as subtracting a negative number. And if they take it away, it's more or less giving you the 17.2 back, and therefore you would not owe them anything. All right, what number minus pi gives you zero? Well, it would have to be minus itself, right? So that's easy. Pi minus pi is zero. How about the square root of e? You would have to be subtracting what to end up at zero? You'd have to be subtracting itself. Remember, it's just the same sign. It's the same number you subtract to end up at zero, no matter how complicated it looks. All right. Um, how about this one? What number minus negative 7 thirds is equal to zero? Now again, this is a little complicated. I could see I get confused, but you're subtracting negative 7 thirds. So you must have started with, is it positive or negative? That's where we can get confused. Well, look at what you're, you're subtracting just this. It's, let's actually just box in what we're subtracting. This is what we're subtracting. So we must have subtracted itself. <laughs> so therefore the answer is negative 7 thirds. Again, another way of thinking about it is these two negatives in the middle are going to turn into a positive. Let's see these two negatives make a positive. So we, we must have started at the left of the number line and moved right to end up at 0. Again, if you start with zero, I know you could put negative zero in there, or, yeah, or you could put positive zero in there. Either way, yeah, in this case it would make more sense to put positive zero. But at any rate, zero doesn't have a sign, so we can just put zero. Um, if you start at zero, you're already at zero on the number line, right? So, yeah, let's just draw a number line. There's zero. So you wouldn't have to go, you wouldn't have to subtract anything, right? You would just stay there. So that's the best way of thinking of that one. Um... Where are we at here? Okay, let's go on to the next example. So any number minus itself gives you zero. Remember, you can think of A as any number, and therefore you subtract any number, any number you choose, and that would give you zero. And again, you can choose any number and jot that down if you want to help you understand this concept. This one's a little bit harder. If I start with negative x, What, must, what number must I subtract to get zero? And I know that a common mistake is that people will put x in here. But remember, you're subtracting itself. Okay, you're, you're subtracting the same number you started with, which was negative x. So therefore, the answer is negative x. Um, again, if that confuses you, just put in a specific number. Whoops. Put in a specific number like negative 3 minus negative 3, which is the same as positive 3, and that will give you 0 back. And again, it doesn't matter how complicated the expression looks, it still works. So AB minus itself would give you 0. So therefore, you're going to put itself inside the box. So a good way to, um, again, this is, this is called the subtractive inverse property. A good way to differentiate this from the additive inverse property is when we look at that, you add the opposite sign. But with the subtractive inverse property, you keep the sign. And maybe that will help you differentiate the two and also keep thinking about the number line conceptually because it ultimately it's about making sense to you. So this is called the subtractive inverse property. And in, in short, simply means that if you take a number and you subtract itself, you end up at zero.